So Toph finds herself on the losing end of a fight. Does that mean she's no longer the best earthbender in the world? Hey guys, welcome to the Geek Talk today. I wanted to discuss something that I just became aware of, which some of you guys have been talking about in the comments and you're like, what do you guys think? What do you think about Toph and Yang Ling? What do you think about Toph and Yang Ling? And I had no idea who Yang Ling was until about a few days ago when I finally read the Imbalance comics. By the way, you can check out my review for Before You Read the Imbalance, or if you want to see the spoiler review, you can also do my After You Read the Imbalance comic book. I don't know why I blinked on that. So today we're going to, you know, kind of cover what happened between Toph versus Yaling and why it went down the way it did. But today I want to do something a little bit different, a little bit more special because I was doing a little bit of research and seeing what the fan base kind of felt about it because, you know, I'm a little bit late to the Imbalance game because it came out in January and I just read it now at the end of 2020 or nearing the end of 2020. And so I'll be doing a direct response to a Reddit post that pretty much went through all of the points highlighted that I would want to talk about in a specific video, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to do it with the help of some of my friends because I thought it'd be really fun to do this as like a mini audio drama because it's really fun to actually read out Reddit posts and then you kind of realize how petty it is sometimes when people are talking about these things, especially when you say it verbally out loud. But go ahead, we're gonna go watch this, we're gonna break it down. I'll see you guys on the flip side. Oh, and just for context, this Reddit post, uh, someone made the question of is Yaling stronger than Toph? and if Yao Ling could defeat Boomy. There's also another question in there about if Yao Ling could be a metal bender or a lava bender, but we're not really gonna talk about that. We mostly wanna focus on the Toph and the Yao Ling stuff. But let's get into it right now. Yao Ling isn't as strong as Toph. It was extreme PIS. She would most likely be able to bend metal if she were to bend a sub-element, and Boomy destroys her. PIS? PIS stands for Plot Induced Stupidity. That can mean a lot of things, but in this case, it's when a character wins or loses when they shouldn't for the sake of the plot. So, character A should outclass character B, yet character B somehow wins without any equalizers. For example, the Ninja Turtles beating Superman in a fight would be PIS, because Superman is obviously league stronger, faster, and more powerful and plot induced stupidity is not exclusive to fight. The main question here, at least to start off, is is this plot induced stupidity? I personally, I'm gonna just say that right off the bat, I don't think it is. I think there is a lot of context around what happened and it does make sense for the plot. And also th there's another factor into this fight that I think people are kind of, they're overreacting. <laughs> they're overreacting to Toph's loss, which really isn't a loss if you're really being honest. She just kind of trips up a little bit. Toph could have got out of that situation. She wasn't really defeated. But if we really want to go to the fact that we say that she was defeated, can we say that it's actually plot-induced stupidity? Let's go a little bit further and, and we'll dive in a little deeper. Plot-induced stupidity. People usually say it when the character they want slash expect to win loses in a fight. For example, when Katara beat Azula at Ba Sing Se, fans who want Azula to win all the time Call the fight piss. So this is something that happens a lot, I think, in this community is that you'll have people using this term very similar to Mary Sue. Like you use Mary Sue as a way really in today's modern age as someone, as a female character you don't like rather than actually using the definition of Mary Sue. That's why you get, you know, people saying Cora is Mary Sue when she's kind of anti Mary Sue. I also have a video about that if you want to watch that right here. But it's similar with PIS. It gets kind of thrown around willy-nilly a little bit too much without really considering what's going on. Now, of course, this Reddit conversation goes a little bit deeper about that and actually does make a true debate of whether this actual thing is plot-induced stupidity. Can you call it PIS if she beats Toph twice? How can it be when we have no prior reference to her bending skills? So I agree with the second part of this. Uh, we shouldn't just automatically just, you know, throw the PIS camera down on this when we don't really know much about Ya Ling. I mean, if a new character just comes onto the scene and they're good, they're just good. It's like when we have Azula come in on season two and she's just beating Zuko. We can't just go like, oh, that's plot is stupidity. You know, like you can't just make that proclamation. Now, of course, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into this. People are gonna have some uh, rebuttals to, to this claim. The thing I don't agree with, which I don't understand why this person wrote this, but the first portion of that, Ya Ling did not beat Toph twice. She only beat her once. In fact, Yao Ling lost her fight against Toph 
prior to that engagement. And that's the reason why she does so well against Toph the second time. Uh, for full context before we go moving further, the first fight they had, obviously it's what we typically would, you know, be used to seeing, you know, Toph defeating another Earthbender because as we know, it's very difficult to defeat Toph as an Earthbender. However, something that I think that gets overblown for Toph because of her seismic sense and people say, well, she has seismic sense, she can never lose. She can know what you're gonna do before you do it. That's not exactly true. While it, it is true that she has a 360 view and that is a great advantage for her as an earthbender, she does not have precognition. And I think a lot of people misconstrue her seismic sense with precognition. She's not a Jedi Knight who can predict into the future. She can't know, you know, exactly what move you're gonna do. She just has sight. I mean, she, she basically is just a blind woman, young lady who now can see. And just like someone else who can normally see, you still have to be able to react to someone else's moveset. It's not just about being able to, you know, have the ability to, to, to see the attack. You have to also be able to react to it. And that's what happens to Toph when she does find herself on the losing end of that second fight. And it's one of the reasons why Yao Ling did better is because she saw that, hey, this lady is blind and she has a specific way of sensing me through Earth. So she plays into that by making sure she stays in the air as much as possible. She makes sure her attacks are coming from the air and not being rooted to the ground as what is typical with most Earthbenders. Plus, the deciding move that got Toph on her back was that it was a double move. It was a move that Yang Ling attacked her first from the center to open up the opportunity to disrupt her balance on the bottom to make her trip up. Now, of course, this is just one instance of a fight and the reason why when I do my versus series or I do versus videos I have the in scenarios of most likely victor that still factors in that the other person who is the loser oftentimes is I guess is what you can deem it with my versus isn't always the loser you know when I say that it's like you know this person wins seven out of ten times there is still those three out of ten chances and Yao Ling in my opinion won one of those minority victories in this situation. I don't think that this brings down Toph in any significant way. I don't think this makes her the worst or earthbender or that it's atrocious that she would even be on the losing end. She's not perfect and she shouldn't be. And I actually think this makes her a more interesting character that she has some more hardships and she's not just beating earthbenders left and right. It will make her a better fighter because I'm sure she's going to retool herself to figure out why is it that Yao Ling beat me in that situation and then make herself an even better fighter. If someone's just very good, typically speaking, they don't actually elevate their skill because they're not being challenged by other opponents. So I actually think this is actually a very good thing to have in the series, not a bad thing. Seeing as Toph stalemated Boomy, defeated supposedly elite royal guards like it was nothing, and has faced worst against much worst, the fight was PIS. Or Yao Ling is just that good. Bending fights isn't an A over B and B over C, so A over C type of a thing. She beat Toph by exploiting her weakness. She has no anti-feats to make it PIS. It's just something you don't like. So for this, I feel like this commenter was starting to dig at this other one a little bit too much because you're kind of making the assumption that this person doesn't want to believe it just because they like Toph too much, which I mean, kind of is a fair thing because in my interaction with Toph fans, that is often the case is that they favor her or even with like Legend of Korra characters against the last Airbender characters, people go straight to their favoritism, but don't actually really factor in combat abilities and just the idea that, you know, these beloved characters we have can be challenged. But I do want to hone in on one point being made and the fact that transitive property does not work. <laughs> it does not work, especially with the dynamics of a fight. Yes, you can talk about likelihoods, but it does not always mean that a certain outcome will always be the case. The biggest one I always try to make a, a light of is that Dooku always beats Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan was able to beat Anakin, and Anakin was able to defeat Dooku. If you're looking at that, you're like, well, that doesn't make sense. Why did it should be A over B over C? And like, it, it, when you're looking at something like this, fights are so nuanced, they're, they're so varied. You're never gonna get the same result all the time. Even if you're looking at, that's why you have in sports, when you have playoffs, you have, you know, best out of seven, you have best out of five. You don't have things that are just one off, unless you're talking about like the UFC or like MMA, but then they have, you know, rematches and stuff like that. But anyway, it's, it's there's a lot more to it than just one person beats somebody, someone beats someone else, that's the end of it. It's true. It's very true that I think, and I want to point this out, I don't think Yaling will ever beat Bumi. I don't, there's nothing that she's represented to us that shows us that she can do that. But because specifically the narrative tells us that she is exploiting Toph's weakness, 
a weakness that Bumi does not have, then yes, it does make sense for Yaling to be able to challenge Toph and even to get the upper hand. So we ought to keep that in context to make it make sense for the, the story at hand. If this happened with Bumi, then yes, I'd be right on board. I'd be like, ooh, plot induced stupidity. How is she contending with Bumi when there's nothing there that she is exploiting? But with Toph, there is something there she is exploiting. It was PIS because Toph should be able to deal with earthbenders like her. It was PIS because a character that is supposed to be an Azula of earthbending lost to a character the writers wanted to try and make challenging. Or maybe she's also just an Azula of earthbending. There can be more than one prodigy. Again, Yao Ling has zero anti-feat. It's not PIS just because you don't like how strong a character is. If you got a show about Bumi and then you saw Toph, who is only 12, keeping up with him, you'd probably call that PIS. And then this too. So the idea that it's just inexcusable to, to think that there's another Earthbender out there that can actually be on Toph's level. Like, you know, that just seems really weird to me. I know that Earthbenders have this tendency of being um, uh, very prideful of their abilities. Like even when we saw Boomy from the very first season, he's talking about, like, I'm the best Earthbender. And then you got Toph being, I'm the best Earthbender. And you kind of just, uh, this must be a cultural thing between Earthbenders, but they're very, very proud of, of what they can do with their ability with Earth. And I think when you have that, you also have the fans also kind of, you know, you know, shouting out those same things like best Earthbender, best Earthbender. But there's at least several hundred, several thousands probably a million in terms of population in the Avatar world. Don't do a douche. But there's probably millions of Earthbenders in the world. We don't know what the exact population count is, but with that count, there's gotta be at least a few other people out there who can contend with Toph and even with uh, Boomy to an extent. It's not just them, you know, having complete real estate on all Earthbending throughout the entire world. You can't compare the two. Yaling hasn't shown any feat of being Toph's level. She had feats that show she's a relatively good earthbender, but not Boomy slash Toph's level. We know Boomy versus Toph isn't PIS because even though we followed Toph, we saw how good Boomy was. If we watched a show about Boomy while knowing Toph did her things, we wouldn't call their stalemate PIS. So I get where this person is coming from and their 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 sentiment and, and what they're trying to debate is valid in, in certain situations. But the issue that they seem to be missing here is that context that I keep talking about. There is a difference between what is being exploited against Toph versus what is being exploited or can be exploited against Boomy. Yes, true. Big scale earthbending. We didn't really see it from Yao Ling. And plus we don't really, if we actually do look at that, we don't really have to because who was she facing prior to that point? She was facing just, you know, little criminals who were in the uh, Republic City or not Republic City, the Cranefish Town or whatever. And she really had no reason to show any great big display of earthbending. And then she fought Toph and they were fighting with equal footing. They weren't doing anything huge or anything like that. And she was defeated. And then she comes back and she uses what she knew from prior fights or prior fight from Toph and use that against her. So again, I get where this person's coming from, but they're kind of missing the greater context. I am not mad simply because my more liked character lost. I am mad because the writers tried to make Yaling a challenge to Toph without showing any feat or lore to back her strength up. Tons of my favorite characters lost in fights. That is not the problem. If their opponent has been shown to be very strong, it doesn't even matter if we learn of their power before or after the fight as long as we know. You're misusing PIS. Winning a fight is a feat in and of itself, and they explain how she beat Toph in regards to the second fight. She has less feats because Toph has been in 30 plus episodes in three comics. Yan Ling only has one comic. Not all characters need feat scaling. And this is a common thing you'll see in like debate circles is that sometimes people will just tout more feats as being better, even if someone else has a better single feat. And the fact that, you know, Yao Ling even is able to contend with Toph at all, I think is a better feat than not having, you know, several feats from, you know, having a, an entire TV show and then, you know, a bunch of comics. So yes, I can definitely feel for this sentiment. And I think it is something that I think the debate community needs to be more mindful of, uh, or not mindful of, but I, I guess adjust because it's something I, I fundamentally usually disagree with the, the debate community about is the, the fact of having, you know, more feats versus someone who has, you know, significant feats. PIS, plot induced stupidity, is a term used to refer to events in a story that contradict a character's normal capabilities for the purpose of the plot. Toph has shown abilities that far outplay Yaling's capabilities. She lost because the plot demanded it. 
not because Toph was too weak. And there's a, a point here that's being made that, that keeps being touted about weakness and, and strength, weakness and strength. It's not about Toph being weak. It wasn't like she was in a, it, it would have been an issue if this happened, right? Let's say they were in a tug of war of, of Earth, right? They were both holding on to like a boulder and, and it was about who can crush the other with a boulder first. If something like that were to happen, then yes, we can call plot-induced stupidity because we don't really see Yaling having that great strength of power and Toph should have a more intimate knowledge of Earth and, a, and more strength with it. But Yaling did not defeat her by way of strength. She did it with her ingenuity of exploiting Toph's weakness and also by using a precision attack to distract Toph in one attack and then get her on another by hitting her in the midsection and then getting her on the feet. So again, there's this weird conversation that's being developed in this debate about like strength and weakness when it's it, not all fights are about strength and weakness in that regard there's, there's that in between a, a, of skill that needs to be factored in and that's what's happening in this fight at least for me of course yaling doesn't get many feats but if you bring in a new character that beats a top two earthbender you need to show before or afterwards that they have feats or lore backing them up we know iroh beats zhao besides lightning generation iroh has lore and hype backing him up even if he has a handful of feats. The amount of feats don't matter, as long as they have hype or a select few feats to prove their strength. And to end it off, I completely agree with the last person who commented on this thread, uh, who kind of sums up everything together, and it's sort of my own conclusion as well, so we'll just listen to this person uh, speak right now. I personally don't see how they contradicted the story. The story didn't mess with Toss abilities, it just put up Yaling's abilities and quick thinking to surpass Toph's reckless earthbending. Though I'll disagree on that point, I don't think Toph was being completely reckless with her earthbending. I think it's just that Yaling was just skillful enough to get around Toph's earth earthbending. But I don't think it was a case of Toph being like reckless, or at least nothing in the scene itself or the comic itself made it seem like that Toph was being reckless. So I don't agree with that point specifically. Yaling is a new character, so obviously she doesn't have any feats. The very first time we see her fight can't be PIS because there's nothing to contradict yet. We literally don't know how strong she is. And the first time the comics established that she's strong, how strong, I don't know, you call it PIS. Also, this is just in my opinion, but I rather prefer actual fights and feats rather than lore and hype, because narrating tales involves huge amounts of exaggeration. But again, this is just in my opinion. And yeah, that last point is really important too. Uh, sometimes you'll have a, a character who has a lot of hype, like an Iro, and you don't actually see their actual fights or you don't see them fight anyone who's of note or of significance. So while yes, you do have this hype that kind of puts them in like these higher tiers, you don't actually have the ability to say they will definitively win because you're like, well, we haven't actually seen how they operate in a fight. And I think that sometimes gets lost to in debate sometimes because people kind of talk about things nebulously or nebulously. I can never say that word, nebulously, nebulously, nebulously. I but I'm far more in line of having more practical examples of people fighting versus just lore and hype. But yeah, that's it. Uh, so my final conclusions on this obviously is that I don't think that Yaling is stronger than Toph. So to answer that Reddit thread, no, I don't think Yaling is tougher than Toph. But just because somebody is not as strong or someone else is weaker doesn't mean that weaker opponent can win. We've seen it before. I'll, again, we'll talk about Star Wars again. Obi-Wan defeating Darth Maul as a Padawan. Obi-Wan defeating Anakin on Musafar. Like those are situations where a, well, in one situation, it's just a Hollywood ending. But in the other situation, it was actually skill and thought processes outweighing someone who has greater strength and that is a possibility and i don't think this is any mark against toff's power scaling or, or her ability to fight or you know all the pr prodigious stuff that people uh, have for, for toff i don't think that does that at all um you you can have her lose fights and and still have her be a great character it happens in media all the time but of course i want to hear from you guys in the comments below what did you think about the toff and the yaling fight do you think that this really does diminish toff do you think it's an over exaggeration that people say oh no they've completely just destroyed her character um, or are you just somewhere in between and you're not quite sure who to side with let me know in the comments below and if you want to watch more videos about avatar and other geek related videos they're somewhere here around my head i'll see you guys in the next one as always peace love and remember be water my friends